In this episode, we're going to be talking all about email marketing, list building strategies that actually work. If you want to build an email list or get attention in your market, you're going to want to stick around because that's what we're going to cover in this episode. Hey, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Also, if you're on YouTube, make sure that you click the little bell icon so you get notified when I go live with a new video. Well, hey, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Amazing Seller Podcast. This is episode number 824, and today I'm excited, well, because I got Chris Schaefer back on the show, and we're going to talk all about a topic that we love to talk about because it's so darn powerful, and that is email list building, and actually something that Chris put together that we're going to be going through here that you're going to be able to access for free, by the way. And uh, we're going to walk through it here in today's episode. So, Chris, thanks for coming back, man. What's up? Not a whole lot, man. Still, uh, as of recording this, at least, we're still kind of in full lockdown mode. And I'm yeah. getting ready to start climbing the walls. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like, the first, the first few weeks weren't too bad. And now that the end is actually in sight, I'm mm. like, all right, I'd love to just go for a walk or, like, go to the gym. You can only do you, so many push-ups. You can't even before, walk though, right? I, I can with Owen, but only for 20 okay. minutes. So it's not the same thing, right? And wow. one of the things, and you, you and I have talked a couple times since this whole thing started about yeah. like creating different habits and like micro habits and some of those kinds of things. And I had yeah. to completely change my routine. And I think, I think I said in one of the coffee talks that we did that like, yeah. I'm okay with that. And I, mm. But I have to change my routine like every four or five weeks anyway. And so now yeah. I'm kind of getting to that point where I'm like, all right, I want to go to the gym. Right. Like when I take a break today, I, I want to go lift something heavy and like actually take my mind <laughs> off, off of work. Right. Right. Cause like I can't, I can't turn it off. And the only time that I can turn it off is when I'm hanging out with other people, which right. I can't do, or right. like I'm about to die doing a bench press. <laughs> right. Cause like you're just like, okay, uh, can't think about work right now. Right. And I can't really do those things. Push ups don't really do the same thing. Kettlebell workouts don't really do the same thing. And a 15, 20 minute walk with the dog is like, nice but it's not really the same thing um but other than that i'm doing great we've been we've been super productive um on the tas side of things on our brands so mm. i can't complain too much but i'm, I'm no. getting a little antsy um and i'm kind of sad because you know we missed out on our trip to puerto rico and some of those yeah. kinds of things and i'm seeing like this the, as of recording this we were there last year this time um no it's crazy and I keep seeing pictures like pop up because, you know, Google Photos is like, like, hey, last year you were doing this. I'm like, oh, that uh, beach looks really nice right now. Thanks for having uh, it in. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Google. Uh, but other than that, I'm, I'm doing good. Oh, now Google thinks I'm talking to it. Yes, it does. I can, uh, did, did it go off in the background? Uh, it did on my laptop because I have oh, okay. a Chromebook. I use a Chromebook for almost everything. And so I was like, hey, what do you want? I'm like, not for you to show me photos anymore. Um, <laughs> but what we're talking about, Scott, what we're diving into today is, is three list building tactics that you can use that are super easy that actually work. And these are things that mm. we've done kind of over and over again. Mm. And I think before we dive into those three things, we should probably tell people why we're so passionate about email, right? Like it's 2020 as of recording mm. this. And there's a lot of shiny objects out there that people really like. Like we, we get questions all the time about like, why do you talk about email versus Facebook Messenger and all of those kinds of things? And I think mm. right now is a really good time to, to talk about that because of some of the things that have happened with Amazon. You and I uh, recorded an episode, I think two or three episodes back mm -hmm. that was talking about the changes that Amazon made, right? To the associates program. Yep. And my biggest problem with Messenger and with like SMS versus email, and I'm not saying don't do those things, but they're platform dependent right? Yeah. Email is not platform dependent. Email is old enough at this point that any changes that happen are not like going to destroy your business, right? Yeah. We kind of know what we're going to get. And if we have an email list, we can take it with us, right? If, if I don't like what ConvertKit is doing, which I love ConvertKit, but if they Absolutely. decide to start doing something that I don't like, I can go right. to another email provider. And we've experienced that personally with the TAS email list. We've, we've moved through just about everybody, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so- yeah. We know what we're going to get. It's not platform dependent. And the biggest thing for me, at least, is that consistently it is the highest return on investment activity as reported mm -hmm. by marketing departments. Mm -hmm. the, the lowest number that I could find was from HubSpot and it was 38 to 1 ROI, right? Mm -hmm. So for every dollar that you invest in email marketing, that means you're getting $38 back. 
mm. right? As a business, a lot of the numbers that I found were closer to 45 or $50, That's right? Crazy. So yeah. let's just assume it's only 38 to one, right? Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that ROI and that's a consistent ROI that we're going to get over time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so not only is it not platform dependent, not only is it movable, not only can we take it with us, not only do we know what we're going to get, but it's extremely effective from a marketing standpoint. In fact, marketing departments almost always report that email marketing is the single most effective thing that they do from a digital marketing standpoint, mm -hmm. right? Over and above Facebook ads, Facebook messenger, Google ads, SEO, content creation, right? It comes back to email marketing. And a lot of people still fall into the trap of like, I don't like getting emails from Best Buy. So why would I send emails to everybody else? And you kind of have to, right? Yeah. Like you're yeah. missing out on the best activity from digital marketing standpoint, if mm -hmm. you're not doing it. And so we went to talk today about some of the ways to start to build that email list. We can have a whole nother conversation about how to get in contact with those people. And we've, we've done that in the podcast in the past past. But the, the key to getting started and starting to see some of that return on investment is starting to actually put emails on that list and doing that consistently over time. Yeah. So first off, let me just say what we've decided to start doing is Chris is really starting to put together blog posts on, uh, on the blog. So this way here, you're able to access it, not just in an audio. So this is actually coming from a blog post that Chris wrote breaking down these three tactics. And if you want to actually see this, what we're going to do is we're going to link everything up in the show notes. And you can find that by heading over to theamazingseller.com forward slash 824. So instead of me giving you a whole bunch of different links, because we do have a free class that you can take, which is totally free. Uh, we have this whole post now is free. And we have other resources for you to, to be able to get behind this in your own business, uh, even if you're just starting. Um, so definitely make sure you check that out. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of comb through this blog post, give you guys exactly the highlights of it. But I would encourage you to go there and really just take notes through it, but also apply it. Because like you said, Chris, you know, email has been around for a very long time. And a lot of people say, well, is it still effective? And the answer is yes. And I don't care if you want to disagree, that's fine. Uh, it's working well for me. It has for years. It's still working. It's one of the number one ways to get people's attention. Uh, and you might say, well, isn't social media? No, it's not because it's actually noisier. And yes, I can pay every single time I want to get in front of my audience, which we do. And it's, yes, it is worth it, but it's always about getting the people on a channel that I can have more control with that conversation. And Chris did a whole talk at Brand Accelerator Live about, you know, communicating and staying. It's the cultivation uh, stage of this whole process, which is really important. And so I just want you guys to understand that you may be thinking to yourself, I don't think that email marketing is still working. I'm here to tell you that it is. Um, now, you do have some things that you want to do correctly when you're creating the list, and we talk all about that uh, throughout various podcast episodes, inside of Brand Creators Academy, all that stuff. But the bottom line is this, if you have the right people in your market and you get them to raise their hand from there, you can show up in their inbox and you get, you know, give them value and show up and have them remember who you are and your business. And that's how you can increase sales and also increase engagement and all that stuff. So Chris, with that all being said, why don't you take us through it, man? Where do we need to start here or where do you want to start with these three tactics? So the, we're actually going to start kind of in the middle of the blog post. Um, okay. but the, the, one that everybody has probably heard us talk about is content giveaways, right? Yep. And if you're getting started, if you don't have any traffic, if you're just getting started in this thing, this is probably where I would start. It's the mm. easiest thing to implement. Um, it's extremely effective and it's kind of hard to mess up if you follow the process, right? You can build a really big email list, mm. but you're trading dollars versus time, right? So if you have a couple bucks to throw behind that, that is absolutely where I would start. And we've covered this a couple different places. We talk about it at listbuildclass.com. Um, you'll hear us refer to this as a giveaway, a market giveaway, a contest, right? And, and really what you're trying to do is find something cool that would interest your market and putting it in front of them. And we do this to start every brand basically that we've ever started. It's how we started what we still at this point refer to as the new brand, which is a little over three years old at this point. It's mm -hmm. how we started um, the case study brands inside of Brand Creators Academy, right? And we walk through the whole process there. But realistically, this is 
probably the easiest and most effective way for people to get started. And we've done this a ton of different times. We've gotten anywhere from 4,000 to, I think one example that we talked about, we got 9,728 leads for about 18 cents a piece, right? Mm. And we were able to email Was that our last people one? and stay in contact with them. Was that the last, uh, last one, Rick? Because that one there, the number on that, I, I think I remember exactly, was 9,332 um, that we did inside of uh, Brand Creators Academy. And uh, I don't know what the total was per lead. I think it was, you know, 18 cents or less. Um, but uh, yeah, we built that list up to 9,332 to be exact, which was pretty crazy. Yeah. And so we've, we've done, you know, uh, we've done this a ton of times. We've kind of nailed this process down. And if you guys go to listbuildclass.com, you can see that if you go to the blog post that we'll link up to in the show notes, you can kind of see a little bit of that process. I, that post actually links over. So it's like two hops if you're going yeah. through the show notes, but that links over to a, a guide that we did. That's basically a written version of the list build class. So you can follow along step by step. And that's Scott, that's one of the reasons we decided to start doing more written content in 2020 was yeah. like, you can listen to these podcasts, but until you actually see it kind of in a step-by-step -step format, sometimes it's harder to understand. So that's there as well. But that to me would be the very first thing that, that I would take a look at. It does take a little bit of money to do, uh, but you don't need any traffic to do it. Mm. If you have a little bit of traffic coming to your site, the other two methods I would definitely take a look at first. The, the first method, if you have any traffic coming to your website, you should have what I'm calling the, uh, the email update method, right? And if you go someplace like neilpatel.com, um, if you go to brandcreators.com, if you go to any mm. of the websites that we've built for our case studies, we have this. And literally, it's just a pop-up. We use HelloBar to do this, uh, but there's a bunch of different plugins that you can use to do it. And it's literally a pop-up that says something like, hey, do you want to know more about this thing? <laughs> Give us your email address. Right. Right? Obviously, we're going to word it a little bit better than that. But that's basically what you're doing. And it's just a pop-up. And if they type in their email, then they know that they're going to get that from you, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to get your weekly emails that you're sending out. Now, the, the upside to this is it takes about five minutes to set up, right? You That's have to big, set up the little form. It's and time commitment. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's, super, <laughs> it's super simple to set up. The downside of this is unlike something like a giveaway or the other method that we'll talk about here in a minute, it converts a lot lower, right? Typically, this converts somewhere between one and 2% of people. So if you're getting a thousand people to your website, that's only 10 emails a month, but it's 10 extra emails a month in perpetuity that you spent five or 10 minutes to get, right? The thing that's really cool is when that starts to scale. And if you talk about something like the new brand where we're getting over 100,000 monthly uniques, that then becomes a thousand extra emails a month that we're getting for having spent five to 10 minutes of time mm -hmm. to set this thing up, right? So we didn't have to put in like any real design. We didn't have to put in much more than two minutes worth of thought of, mm. of like, how would you like more information about the thing that you're already interested in, yeah. right? And we're actually seeing that in the new brand. Uh, and if you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see that I'm using air quotes when I say that. Uh, <laughs> and when we're seeing a couple hundred to a little over a thousand emails a month from that website for having done something like that. Now, mm -hmm. now I, would, I would definitely do that if you have any traffic, but the, the third method is something that I would take a look at. It's going to convert a little bit better than that. But again, you do have to have traffic or be willing to drive ads to it. And that's going to be the guide checklist or like walkthrough, right? And if you guys have gone to brandcreators.com, you've seen the future proof brand checklist. That's a great example of this, right? 100%, We're trying yeah. to give you something that's, that's going to help you. And in exchange, you give us your email address and we're going to communicate with you, right? It's a pretty obvious transaction, but this works in just about every single market. And if you can find something that works, right, 10 things you need to know before you go on your first bass fishing tournament. Uh, that, that would be an example of like a guide, right? You know or the, the checklist the, you need to take with you. Go ahead. The other great example, Chris, and we share this in actually the playbook, uh, is um, Mere Mortals, woodworking for Mere Mortals. Like his, yeah. his thing is a checklist of all the top tools that you need as a beginner woodworker. Right. So that's a great example uh, of being able to give people a checklist that is super easy to do. So in your market, an easy one would be like, what are the five products that you need to do X? Right. Like, so you, that could be your checklist. So anyway, Chris, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it was just, I wanted no, to show an example. That, and that, that's a great example, right? Because this, this to me is like one giant method, right? It's either a guide, a checklist or a walkthrough. In his case, yep. it's a checklist of things that you need to take with you. We could uh, take the, the listbuildclass.com. I could put an email capture in front of that and that could be a walkthrough, 
right? Because mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. Um, or we could take that, transcribe that webinar, that workshop, put that into a little free PDF for you, and that would be another example, right? The, the downside to this is it does take a little bit of time, and a, for a lot of people, the idea of creating like a PDF or a giant document freaks people out. Um, yeah. The upside is if you have 20, 50, a hundred dollars, you can go somewhere like Fiverr, free up something like that and have it done for you. As long as you have the idea for the content and you can yep. get what they need. Right. And so for me, I would, if I had traffic start absolutely with the email update method, right. Cause it mm -hmm. costs you 10 minutes and then move to yeah. something like this. Right. If you don't want to do a giveaway, you can use the, the checklist guide method and you can drive paid ads to that. And we've actually done that with brandcreators.com. We've done that with some other stuff, right? Just to kind of see what, what it'll cost us. Um, and for us, it's worth it, right? And for a lot of people, ads can be worth it. Um, so it, it's up to you kind of how you want to knock that out. But that to me um, is definitely worth taking a look at if you have traffic, right? Yeah. The giveaway method is the easiest if you have no traffic, if you're just getting started. The other two, if you have some traffic, implement those and then look at something like the giveaway method if you want to kind of massively scale that list. Does that make sense? It, it does. I, I just want to, I want to, you know, act as the listener now and ask you this question because I know we get this a lot and that is, okay, so I put something out there, a contest, a giveaway, but aren't I just going to get a whole bunch of free seekers? They're not going to ever buy anything from me. Like, it's not worth it to do that then. I mean, like, why would I do that? It's just going to, you know, get the free people that want stuff for free. What would you say to them? I, so here's, here's the thing. I, I can make that argument for each of these methods, right? Anytime you're giving anything away for free, you're going to get that. Giveaways are just a little bit more obvious, right? Yeah. But somebody could sign up for your free checklist and then unsubscribe and never have an intention of buying. But if we're doing the email marketing right on the back end, that's okay, right? We're, we're still going to get those people. And I think the biggest thing as you're thinking through this process is what is working in your market right now, right? If we find the right fit, whether it's a giveaway or the checklist, right? Let's just look at those two methods because the email updates, anybody can do that. You should do that. Um, it takes you 10 minutes, like I've said a couple times already. Yeah. So get that up and then look at one of these other two. But if, if we have the right bait, right? It's just like, fish. let's just go back to the fishing example. Mm -hmm. If we have the wrong bait, we're going to catch the wrong fish, right? right? So with a giveaway, we just have to find the thing that appeals to people in that market. And with checklists or uh, walkthroughs, we have to do that too, right? Mm -hmm. With a giveaway, if I'm giving away something like a podcast microphone, let's say, you know, because I'm looking just at what's on your desk. If, if I'm targeting podcasters and I give away a podcast microphone, Yes, I might get a few people that are interested in singing or like studio recording, right. but chances are that people who are interested in the road podcast mic are podcasters. Right. Most right. people aren't going to be interested in it, even if they're in the microphone niche. Now, mm -hmm. if I was going to give away a laptop be, you know, that had podcast recording software, and we don't use anything special, right? right? But let's just say there was this magical podcast recording software, and I was going to give away a laptop that had that on it. Right. Well, that's a little bit too broad, right? Because anybody can uninstall software from a laptop and use the laptop, right? So we don't want to give away an iPad. We don't want to give away any of those things. We want to give away something that's going to be specific to the market. So mm -hmm. if we take a look at fishing, right? If I'm giving away a fishing rod, yeah, there's going to be a handful of people that, that jump in and just want to get it. But at least I still know they're interested in fishing because it's market right. specific. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Well, and when you do your targeting, you're targeting people that are interested in that. So that's like one thing we, I think we need to throw out there is like, we're not just throwing the line in the water anywhere. We're like, oh, we're going to that pond because we know they have bass in that pond, right? So we know that because we can use Facebook ads to target precisely who we're looking for and then drop the bait in the line. Um, and so, and then you're attracting the right people. But yeah, I agree. Like you need to have the right the right lead magnet as we call it. And then from there you need the right audience that you're, that you're advertising it to, or you're putting it in front of. Um, but, uh, you know, for people that say that as well, I just think that sometimes it's, they're looking for an excuse not to do it. <laughs> so it's like, I, let's, let's not do that. And I think, I think that's, that's the easy position to have, right? And it, it's totally human. It's totally normal to have that position, right? Because we're resistant to change as human beings. And if it's something that we haven't already implemented in our business and seen the value of, as business owners, we're often very skeptical of it. And we should be. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Once you try it, you'll figure out kind of what works and what doesn't, right? Yeah. The biggest issue that I see people have is they don't do 
either like the, the giveaway product selection correctly, or they, they build the wrong type of a checklist, mm -hmm. right, for their audience. Um, and so it, it comes back down to that targeting. And the way to get around that, and we talk about this in the post, is by taking a look at what's already working in your market, right? Mm -hmm. We can take a look at giveaways that are being done in the market to see yep. what works and what doesn't, right? We can take a look at our competitors' websites. If I was in the woodworking space, what was the, the site that you, that you really liked? Like, was, I would be um, going to his site, Master the yeah. Craft or what, well, that whatever that one, site is. That, no, is uh, Woodworking for Mere Mortals. Woodworking for, so I would go to his site. I would go to Bob Vila's website. I would go all of these other places and see what they're doing to capture emails. Yep. Here's the deal. If they're doing it, chances are it already works, yep. right? A lot of these sites that are successful have tested this stuff right. Mm -hmm. Now, don't go and copy directly what they're doing. Don't take the oh. exact same giveaway that they had. Don't take the checklist that they have and do that. Make it your own, but shortcut that process and take a look mm -hmm. at what's already being done in the market, right? The same thing with giveaway. People say, oh, what do I give away to the market? Jump into a coffee and see the product that everybody there is talking about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You froze on me. Oh, there he is. <laughs> and I don't know if I froze on my end or if you froze, but... Uh, yeah. Take, take a look at the product that people are talking about and go from there, right? Like don't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, see what's already working and, and make it your own. And then you don't have to worry too much about picking the wrong thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, no, it does. All right. So let's do a little quick recap here and then we'll wrap this baby up. Uh, but first off, you know, there's three different tactics that we're talking about that are great for building the email list. Now we didn't get into like how to nurture the list, how to send emails. Like that's for a whole nother episode. And we actually do go through that in our workshop, which we're going to go ahead and link that all up in the show notes to this episode. But number one is contest slash giveaways. Like those, that's like the easiest way to get started. The best way to get your, yourself started, dip your toe in the water and you'll start building that list. The second way is to give people something a value that they're looking for. And that is what you, what did you call that one, Chris? What was your, your method on that one? The, the, the checklist giveaway, the checklist, or the yeah. checklist worksheet. Yeah. Uh, how to guide. There's a bunch yeah. of slashes in the title. Yeah. 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 So, you know, that one checklist there, guide walkthrough. Yeah. So that, that's the second one. Um, so this way here you can, you know, get those people. And then the third way, Chris was, Email updates, and that's something everybody should implement. It sounds too stupid easy to actually work, and that's part of the reason why it does. Uh, <laughs> because yeah. if they're interested in what you're talking about, and you put something in front of them that says, hey, do you want more of the thing that I already know you're interested in? You're yeah. going to get a certain percentage of those people to sign up. Yes, you're not going to get as many people to sign up for that as you are for the other two things right. as, as far as the percentage goes, but those people are awesome, right? Yeah. They're free people that you don't have to ever really do anything to get other than create the little pop-up one time. So mm. it's definitely worth taking a look. And so what I want to wrap up with here, uh, you know, to really kind of like seal this thing up. And so this way here, you don't overthink this. This is like one part of that process, but this part really does come first because in order to communicate with a list, you need to build the list, right? You have and to have actually, one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And before you actually build it, you actually need to know a little bit more about your market. So here, I'm going to give you an example on how this would look like if you were doing this for your market. If you need help with that, you can go to brandcreators.com and you can see a checklist there that you can download and you can actually see how this whole thing works. But basically, it's there to help you identify your market and see these different growth opportunities. And one of those is building an email list and validating in your market that you can even do it. So first thing you need to do is identify your market. What truly do they want? Not just the product. What does the product help them do? So you need to figure that out. Once you do that, then you figure out what is going to be a great lead magnet, as we call it, and what is going to attract the right people. And then from there, yes, we build the list. And after we build the list, then we have to nurture the list or at least communicate with the list and how frequently you should do that. But don't worry about that right now if you're not there yet. Okay. Again, a lot of people try to figure out the entire process. You don't need to do that yet. Okay, the first two are figuring out the, the market, what they want, what they need, and what will get them to raise their hand. And then number two is use one of them and start building the list, all right? And if you want the overall process of everything that we do, like I said, we're going to link everything up in the show notes to this, that full blog post that Chris wrote, the workshop that is there, all of that. Uh, but definitely go check that out. And that'll be theamazingseller.com forward slash 824 is where you'll find all of the resources there for that. So Chris, any last thoughts before we wrap this up officially? 
other than saying, look, if you're, if you're not building an email list, if you don't have one, you need to have one. Whether you like getting emails personally or not, we need to remember we're not necessarily our market. Mm. And if you just look back at that number at the beginning, right? 38 to one ROI. Mm. There's not a single other thing that you can do in your business that's going to get you that kind of return on investment, right? Mm. Especially for the return on time that you get out of it, right? Mm. To build the email. We, we just talked about the email updates thing, right? That takes 10 minutes one time and it brings us thousands of emails every single month. That to me is a huge return on time, right? Mm. You and I have tossed out the number of $1 as the value of an email, right? That's kind of, we're, we're willing to pay somewhere between one and $2 to acquire an email because we know it's going to bring us at least that over time. Sure. A lot of times it brings us way more than that, right? But let's just map that number back over. So 10 minutes, one time to bring in, let's just use 500 emails a month, right? Mm. Would you like to add $500 worth of value to your business for 10 minutes every single month? <laughs> right? That's $6,000 a year. Right. Why wouldn't you do that? That doesn't even count the, you know, maybe it's an hour for a giveaway, including setup and setting up Facebook ads. Um, I know some people in brand creators Academy might disagree with me. Let's say it's the first time, let's say it's four or five hours, right? right. Okay. Would you like to invest four or five hours to bring in 5,000 or 10,000 emails, 5,000 or $10,000? You're getting paid a thousand dollars an hour, mm. right? Like, yeah. That to me is, is well more than worth it. And there's, there's a lot of things that, that I would do for $1,000 an hour, right? right? And so make sure you're doing this in your business. It's very easy to set up. It's a huge return on time and a huge return on investment for your business. And if you get stuck, come back to the blog post, take a look at where you are, right? If you have traffic, look at email updates, obviously the checklist method. If you don't have any traffic, look at the giveaway method, right? Mm -hmm. Put yourself in, in one of those two buckets and actually take action and implement this in your business. And you're going to see a huge return on that time and on that investment. Yeah. And the very last thing that I'm going to include is where, you know, we always talk about the, you know, like how do you turn that into dollars? But the one thing that we're not also uh, really discussing here, which I want to just make sure that you guys are aware of this as well. Like we also look at the email list as a way to amplify our content and to get our content out there and to really get traffic to our content fast. Um, and so that's another advantage of that or driving people to a YouTube video or driving people to a Facebook uh, post or a Facebook live that you're going to do, whatever. There's more to an email subscriber because they are a person, by the way, you always need to remember that they are also going to help share your message or your brand. They're going to help share your content. They're going to engage with your content. So there's more ways to pay you from that email versus just, you know, going out there and getting money in your hand. There's a lot of other ways. So we look at the email also as a way to connect with someone that could potentially share our stuff or at least visit our website, which by the way, most of the time we're also monetizing that, uh, you know, that traffic through ad networks or affiliate products. So there's a whole bunch of other ways that you can monetize it. But the first thing you need to understand is traffic is key. Attention in your, in your market is key. And when we have that monetization becomes a lot easier. All right. So guys, that's it. That is going to wrap up this episode. Again, the show notes can be found at theamazingseller.com forward slash 824. And as always, remember, I'm here for you. I believe in you and I am rooting for you, but you have to, you have to come on, say it with me, say it loud, say it proud. Chris is going to say it with me in a little bit of a delay today. I think on the count of three, let's see how it goes. One, two, three, take, take action. action. Ooh, we almost got it. All right, guys, have an awesome day. We'll see you in the next episode.